So hi everyone, this is the much anticipated vlog. The neighbor is selling their land and here are some aerial shots of the land, uh, the area that is for sale. I'm gonna be showing you two areas today. One is behind our house and one is in front of our house. And these are two different neighbors selling the land. So looks like people are trying to get a bit of money. I don't know, the economy may not be in the best shape after everything. So as I often say on this channel, just because you're on YouTube doesn't a priori make you an expert on all things. I'm not a lawyer, um, but I can tell you a little bit about buying land in Thailand from my experience and talking with other expats and my lawyer. So um, can you buy a house in Thailand? Yes, you can. Um, but you can't own the land that it's on. The building and the structure can be legally owned and registered in your name. Uh, often people will say about our house, which is over here, they'll comment, oh, this Farang, he, what an idiot. He doesn't own the land. Uh, no, but I have a legal contract on the house. I've always seen the house as something for the kids. So it doesn't really matter to me. Um, and it wasn't so expensive that you would uh, worry so much, you know, and, and I love my wife. I've been with my wife for 10 years, so it's just not an issue. I understand how people can see it as an issue, but you can protect yourself legally. So uh, some people say, I've heard if you're married uh, to a Thai, you can buy land. That is true. You can buy land if you're married to a Thai, but you can't register it in your name. You have to waive your rights to the property. So foreign, foreign nationals cannot own freehold land. The land must be registered in a Thai person's name or in a company name. So uh, that's something to note. So this is the first piece of land we're going to look at today. As you can see, there's a small dwelling here to the right hand side. She is a farmer. She farms green beans and different vegetables all around this area. Uh, the land is hers. She's our neighbor. And the land is here. So as you can see, it's a beautiful piece of land. It's just under a rye and it is got beautiful trees on it it's very meadow like in my opinion so you already have some very old trees which you might think is not very important but in this heat I can tell you it's important to have nicely formed big trees um, around because they bring shade when you're in your garden this place is about the same size as the area that we've built our little house on um, maybe a slight bit bigger it's so hot at the moment that you may be able to see my gimbal on the drone freaking out like going all wonky and that's because of the heat it's 104 f now we got the dogs so this is something to consider for this piece of land this woman has has dogs as many as many ties do hey hey hey, hey. Right, so I have to stay away from the dogs and that's definitely one consideration many Thai people have dogs and more than one too and uh, the real pain in the ass anyway um, one consideration is the dogs and I'm just gonna go under this barbed wire fence and so now the heat is so hot the gimbal on the drone is freaking out and it is it's even difficult to vlog, it's even difficult to come out in this sun because usually we're doing our garden, we're doing physical things, we're in the garden as a family and we just can't do that now, we need to be in the aircon space and it'll be this way for another month or so. I've had other expats reach out to me and tell, tell me that they don't remember it ever being as hot as this in an April. So, um, so let's take a look at the land guys and I'm going to put my wide angle lens on. So you can get an idea. Right, so here we go. Like I said, it's very meadow-like. So as for electricity, it would connect. You can see our house there in the background. So there's our cottage. See the roof of the cottage there in the background. So as for the electricity, this land would connect to the mains electricity over there. Uh, there would be a cost associated with doing that to hook it up with the electric um, but I, not very much here because you already have free phase everywhere um, from my understanding of it so it's it would be just a, a, a small cost to hook it up out here 
I would build a well, a pump. This is our pump here. We had a commercial pump drilled, which has lasted us so far nearly three years. And the guy said it's drilled so deeply that it will last for, well, he said forever, but nothing lasts forever, does it? But he says it's so deep into the water ducts underground because it's a commercial, not a residential drill that they used that uh, it'll never run out. And so far he's been right. And we use so much water for watering the garden and you know, for everything, for showering, bathing, all of this. So, so back to this land, we would, I would suggest you get a well pumped here. And in my opinion, I would keep these trees because they provide the shade and they're beautiful and it'd take years for them to grow again. And I'd put the house at the back here. So if you're going to build a huge mansion with swimming pool, then this land is no good. Um, it's just not big enough uh, overall. It wouldn't be good, big enough. For, I mean, you could fit it, but it'd just look all squashed. Um, but if you're building quite a modest house, a simple house, this land is perfect for a small vegetable garden and maybe even a, a jacuzzi pool just to cool off in the hot days. Um, this land is it's perfect. Now behind, you must note that there are you have sugarcane to your left farming and then behind you've got the cassava farming in, in the back so all around here there's always going to be farmers mooching around tractors coming and going these are things that you have to consider like people think it's just purely tranquil but people are making the livelihoods out here they're making a business uh, of farming and selling things so Yes, there is farming going on, and that means there are farmers, and they're part of the community. Uh, there'll be people bringing their cows past every minute, and you'll be getting stuck in traffic just like this. These are all parts of living in rural Thailand. It's not completely easy. I mean, there's always challenges, isn't there, wherever you live. Um, now, the other thing is the burning. So once a year, for about two weeks of the year, there's burning here. So that's, a, that's lucky in comparison to other places of Thailand where you've got burning for, for months, weeks and months. Here you just get like two weeks of, of quick burning and then it's over. Um, and we get through that by putting air purifiers in, in the house, in the cottage. So that's electricity, that's water, that's a small house that you might build on there. Um, and then you may have a, a small vegetable garden and whatnot here. It's perfectly, it's a perfectly re reasonable sized piece of land for doing that kind of thing. Um, like I said, it's, it's it's a tad bigger than our main area. We do have other land to the side, but our main area, it's, it's a tad bigger. You probably put a new fence around it, make it private like we've done in our place. Uh, well, you've seen on this vlog everything we've done. And if you've not seen, in the playlist section of the channel, there's our house build and our kitchen build series. So you can check them out, what we did and what we built on our piece of land and our farm. So now about the price of this one, before we go and see the next piece of land, this, the price of it is 400,000 baht. Um, and that's for what I think is slightly less than a rye. Now, to my expat friends out there and people that have lived in Thailand, you know that's rather expensive for being so far out here rurally. For my UK, USA and Australia friends, that might seem cheap for a piece of land here, but it's not. And, and you, you can find land for as low as, well, you can go as low as 150, 100 maybe, 1,000 baht. Um, but you also have to consider the proper documentation. Does it have a chenote? Can this land legally be sold from, from the person who's selling it to a Thai, um, to the Thai person that's buying it? So let me explain. These two pieces of land, they don't have Chano, but they have No Sa Sam, which is a document of ownership. It's one step towards, it's the last step before the Chano. Now, you'd never ever go on the advice of a YouTuber, especially this one, uh, about buying land. Go to a lawyer, talk to a lawyer, and do everything through. I'm not a lawyer, I'm just a dude with a hat on, you know, out in, in a field talking to you. So this has got North or Sam. Generally, people say you should only buy with Chinote. That's a lawyer's business. Um, both of these pieces I'm going to show you have North or Sam. This one's for 400k. And you're about to see the second piece and how much that's going to cost. And I have a little story about what's going on with that as well. So... Over three years ago, I originally started this channel as a podcast. 
and I was discussing with people the various applications of plant medicine and fungi and uh, that kind of moved in and amalgamated into the channel that you see now, Life in Bamboo, about my life with a family in Thailand. However, my passion for plant medicines and mushrooms and things like that has not gone away. It's still, still very much a part of my life, very much a part of my reading. I've been heavily influenced by speakers and writers such as Terence McKenna and his brother, Dennis McKenna. And now I've decided to get involved in the revolution, the mushroom revolution that is happening in Thailand at the moment. And the revolution really is about bringing medicinal mushrooms to everybody, making them available to everybody and of different varieties. So mushrooms have been shown to help with certain psychological issues, feelings of well-being, they help the, the body in general. There's much research on different varieties of mushroom. And of course you've seen on this channel that I grow different mushrooms. So I grow oyster mushrooms and I often scavenge for wild mushrooms that are available here in certain seasons in Thailand. And I really want to expand, expand that repertoire, um, potentially now grow lion's mane mushrooms. And certainly I've been using lion's mane mushroom supplements for a long time. Uh, the key thing now that is happening in Thailand is that lion's mane and different medicinal mushrooms are becoming more and more available. However, on the market, sometimes you will find products that are not necessarily what they say on the package. And I think that for me, I'd like to help educate and point people in the right direction in this country towards what's the real deal? What are the real mushrooms that are going to be really beneficial for various reasons? And I'm going to start by talking about um, lion's mane. And one of the key things about mushrooms is they're in two parts. You have the mycelium, which is underground, uh, which is the network of interconnected web of, of mushrooms. And then you have the fruiting body, the actually the sexual organ of the mushroom that pops up from the surface of uh, the, the ground. And, and really the beneficial parts of, of the mushroom are highly concentrated in that fruiting body. And that's what we want from our supplement. That's what we want to get in our diet to wreak the rewards and the benefits of the medicinal mushroom. And so looking around Thailand at different projects that are going on, uh, we came across Fruiting Body, a uh, supplement um, business run out of Phuket by my friend Brendan. And what we love about the product is that it's no starch, no filler. It's using a high concentrate that is eight times more potent than corporate mushroom companies. And that's because they take eight kilograms of lion's mane and they do a hot water extraction all the way down to one kilogram of lion's mane. So you've got this eight to one ratio. And that's, that's the kind of thing we want to direct people to. So if you're interested in trying out lion's mane, there's a link in the description that you can click. Don't forget to click the collect button, which is going to get you 25% off. And at the moment, it's only available to my friends in Thailand. They are, however, working on hooking up you guys in the States, the UK and Australia as well. So also I've left in the description some links, some educational links to the benefits of lion's mane mushrooms supplements. And you can check out Fruiting Body website and podcast there as well. This is going to be part of an ongoing series where I'll travel to different locations in Thailand to talk to people about growing different medicinal mushrooms um, and looking at uh, the, the whole process together, as well as cooking with these mushrooms and exploring the benefits of them. This is really close to my heart. It's one of the reasons I started this channel. So it's great to be back involved with the evolving process uh, that's happening, especially here in Thailand. So don't forget to check out the link in the description and you're going to hear more about this on the vlog for sure. Now, as you can see, the second piece of land is even closer to our place and it's situated right here in front of Damo's mom's house. And what you notice about this piece of land, it's actually less than a rye. It's probably closer to half a rye. And you notice it has a white pagoda on here and the rice shed. So hypothetically, the purchaser of this land would have to remove the pagoda and the rice shed. Now, this land is smaller than the previous piece of land. And so it would be a little bit more challenging to live on it. You'd have to be build a very quaint little home and cottage and a small vegetable garden. And it is closer to the electricity, so it's easier to hook up and have access to running water and electric. So there are some advantages 
Now here's where the controversy lies, and as the title suggests, my wife wants to buy this little piece of land. And the controversy is all in this pagoda here, because this is the burial place of her mother's mother, so her grandmother. And obviously this is a sacred place, and if the land is sold, this would be knocked down. Uh, it's not possible to move it without breaking it. And so there's been discussion of the family. It's a long story how it all ended up in somebody else's hands and that person wants to sell it. But the controversy is there was kind of an unspoken agreement that this would be the resting place of um, grandma and that the land would never be sold. But circumstances have come about where this particular person needs to sell the land. And so now the controversy is it's going to sell and this grandma's grave would be desecrated of course so one solution to this we looked at okay should we buy it um, and the price for this piece of land is also rather inflated it's less than half a rye and the sale price is 200,000 baht um, and so we looked into it but then when you remember her sister visited from Germany her sister is quite a success successful dental clinician in Germany and you know they own well and in the end she has decided to buy it to add to her growing portfolio of land because this is not the only land that her sister from Germany uh, has bought uh, or in this case is buying uh, she has other bits of land and that's a little bonus piece of land that I'm going to show you in a second so you're getting three three for one here guys you never get ripped off with the Naked Guru on Life in Bamboo, that's for sure. So the controversy has been somewhat avoided. Of course, it leaves a bad taste in the mouth, um, particularly as it's a family-related issue. But uh, Grandma's shrine will stay intact. The land will be sold. And that gives you an idea of what the locals around this area, and this area is Southern Buridam, what the locals are selling land for around this area. And you're gonna see huge variation across Thailand. There are some very cheap places and more and more expensive places. And it really depends if the owner wants to sell or they really need the money or they don't. And it depends if it's got a chenote or um, whatever documentation it does and doesn't have, a, have. There's so many variables to buying land here. Oh, and obviously you need a, a Thai wife or a Thai company. So this guy is building his own little house here. It's been going on for a long, long time. Obviously he's strapped for cash and he's building it bit by bit. Best of luck to him. But one of the questions I get a lot as well is about, what about like planning permission? Planning permission for building the house and whatnot. And of course there is the Thai equivalent of planning permission. You need an engineer to sign off. And there's lots of politics to the whole thing that I don't claim to understand nor pretend to understand. Um, it, it is, the, there is, there is a process, but from what I'm told from Damo is this process is more important in the city or if you're surrounded by many other buildings or a busy road or something like that. In the rural area, people often just pop buildings up. Uh, they just build them without any permissions and then they deal with the permissions after. Um, there's not, it's not as rigorous as in the UK or the USA where perhaps if you build something there could be a risk of it being bulldozed and, and to the ground. In Thailand, in this area of Thailand anyway, that doesn't happen. We see people popping up houses um, all over with no registration. In some cases the registration may cost more, more than the house or at least a substantial part of that budget of the house. So you can understand why a lot of locals don't go that route. These people are some of them are living on the edge, you know, so they haven't got the money for that kind of thing. And here we come nicely to my um, wife's sister's other piece of land, one of them. And it's this, what's interesting about this piece of land, this rectangle here, it's got the cassavar plants on at the moment. But the interesting thing is it's that it connects to the main road. And the thinking behind the purchase of this land, which was purchased many years ago for the cost of only 80,000 baht, um, all in with, with the whole thing done, 80,000 baht. Um, the, the whole thinking behind it was one day, this road may be busier, the area may be more built up, and there could be a shop built. Um, they we're only two minutes walk from the main house. So one could build a shop here and have a little shop running to 
you know, when you get old, you're paying the bills kind of thing. Um, you know, it's not going to make money. It's not a Tesco Lotus or anything like that. Just a little Papa Mama shop or even a small restaurant, perhaps, to bring in small bits of money during retirement. And that kind of thinking in Thailand is important, guys. Um, especially if you're married to a Thai and you're setting down roots here for your old age, for your retirement. Obviously, people have retirement funds, you have your investments, you have your savings. But it's also nice to have potential for a little business. And that's why we built our kitchen as an open kitchen. And I don't know if one day I'm 60 odd, the boys want to open it up as a cafe or something similar or a, a, a bed and breakfast, something like that. They could, they could want to do that. And obviously with Damo's sister, this location here would be perfect for a little shop or restaurant. So it's a good buy. And if she sold this today, because it's close to the road, maybe she's going to get 250, 250K for it. So it's double its value. Um, some people buy land just for the investment as well, for the future sale. There are other pieces of land that I'll show you. Um, and I'm going to, it depends how popular this kind of vlog is. If people are interested, then, you know, if you click the like button and you share the content, you are, you are in the comments, you're actually interested in this sort of thing. Uh, there are four or five more other sites that I could visit and talk more about buying land and um, the, the ins and outs of that, but also just show you the land and the prices, which is the, the kind of key thing that people want to know. Um, where's the land? What's it look like? What's the price? Can you connect electricity? Can you connect water? That's the kind of thing people um, really want to know. Now, just while we're up here flying around in the sky, I'm often asked about our solar and so I'd like to show it to you here. It's attached to the blue roof of the wooden house. Uh, you can see a sister's house is there in the brown and then behind the big tree is the cottage. This solar is an on-grid system with Huawei inverter so it supplements the electricity usage through the day and not the night we're not it's not hooked up to lithium batteries so far not hugely cost effective versus the capital but now you've seen it now you know where it is so i think that's it for today's vlog guys and uh, as i mentioned in my little integration um do check out fruiting body if you're in thailand i cannot recommend enough the lion's mane supplements and this is the mushroom revolution it's uh it's taken off guys so thanks for all your support with the channels also if you've not seen my new channel the naked guru uh, there's a link in the description you can head on over there there I'm covering more information about um, what is it to be an expat the ins and outs the good the bad the ugly about Thailand and I've got an interview with my lovely wife on there it's a 30 minute interview I think we go quite personal. We answer questions that you've posed, such as how much do I pay my wife? And what's it like to be on YouTube? And what was it like growing up on the farm? And we go quite deep with her. And she's not, if you know her from the channel, those that have watched a long time, she's not the kind of person to do an interview. So she's quite shy. Um, so do support her. And we go quite personal, you know, we don't try and present ourselves as the perfect couple living the dream. You know, that kind of how we're living the dream. We've, we've got our shit that we go through as well. And so in that interview, we do reveal um, parts of our relationship. And that seems to resonate with people. I don't know, it seems to resonate with people. Yesterday out in the yard There on our backs where the sky was so dark Watching the satellites passing like dust in the air And speaking of planets and distance of time I reach for your hand and you reach for mine And I knew that wherever you were I would want to be there Your eyes seem to Cast a mysterious spell I felt the uprising A furious swell While the black blinking sky Up above us kept 